the real word bespoke becomes from the word bespoken of and it's to speak about something you want from nothing uh, that's what bespoke is about you have a blank canvas when it comes down to a cloth and a finished article uh, the item has to be made on the premises it has to have a cutter who will measure you and make your own pattern out of paper for you and you have a chance to say just how you want the suit to be made between perhaps three stages of fittings uh, between the suits so that's what we terminate as a uh, pretty much more pure bespoke as we call it today. In tailoring you have uh, sewing tailors and cutting tailors. The sewing tailors do everything to do with the construction and the cutting tailors do everything to do with the um, pattern cutting and the design and the fitting and the customer interaction. The English cut typically is quite narrow in the shoulders, um, quite narrow in the waist and has a chest um, and so the, the shape comes from the base of the armhole into the waist and then out. The traditional way of making has remained the same. So we still very much give the feeling of what you call um, uh, padding stitching on a chest piece that is put together by canvas, lap tear and Melton. Uh, these three combinations uh, basically give the chest piece or the foundation for what we call a Savile Row suit. Elegance can't be something that's overt, it can't be something that, um, that, that, that screams. The, the, the people have to, be, you have to look for it, it can't, it's not something which overwhelms them. Well, if you're a trial lawyer, you need the impact, you need an impact to go to, to trial and to court with, and you want to make a predominance on the case. So therefore you can have a big punch on your fabric, so bold pinstripes, big chalk stripes, these are very sort of powerful suits. Um, nowadays in the banking profession you may want to be the opposite, you want to be a little bit more unreserved, still looking very elegant and sharp, but you don't want to come across as more the arrogance, you want the reassurance of a suit. So perhaps you want to be more discreet, like a bird's eye or a spot or a, a nail head. These are very much typical classic suits. With a country suit you should never have plain, plain bottom trousers, you should always have turn-ups. If you have if you wear a waistcoat, you should always have the bottom button undone. Um, there are lots of little areas of detail that need, to be, that need to be known, but whether you actually follow them or not is up to you. Everybody has their own way of being, and they might... It's, it's, like, yeah, it's, like, it's like anything. You need to know the rules, and then you decide how you want to live within those rules and which of them you want to obey and which you don't want to obey. I think the worst faux pas you can make is to be underdressed. It's always better to be overdressed than I'm underdressed. I was at Wimbledon yesterday and I had to still wear a, a linen uh, suit, open shirt, but I think that if I'd been turning up with a t-shirt and uh, uh, shorts, I would feel uncomfortable. Michelin, a better way forward.